the overarching topic of integrity and trust. Now, earlier on, we heard Shai Ganu before the break talk about you know, trust and integrity. And now he would like to conduct a short polling session to hear all of your thoughts. Now, um, trust is an enabler of many things, good relationship, business success, and many more. But as we all know, it is not easy to build trust. So I'd like to welcome back on stage Shai Ganu, the Managing Director, Rewards Business Leader, Asia Pacific of Willis Towers Watson, Singapore, to facilitate this next session. Shai, over to you. Thank you very much, Joey. This is a tough act to follow. As you can imagine, following the minister and before the Attorney General is not an envious spot for anybody. Uh, but we're going to try to do something slightly different. Um, um, as we were, as ICDM and us were thinking about the structure of this uh, session, given the overarching theme of trust, we thought let's take a little step back and partake in almost a thought experiment to try to understand how human beings actually make decisions. So I'm going to do something very uncomfortable for a consultant. I'm not going to use any slides. I know, that's shocking, right? Uh, what we're going to try to do is instead um, look a little bit at an interactive thought experiment. So usually when presenters are presenting, they frown upon people using their smartphones. But for this session, I would encourage all of you to please take out your phones. Everybody, there are no right or wrong answers to this. Please take out your phones, scan that QR code. Uh, let's go back to the QR code. I don't want the results yet, please. No, but I don't want those results, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's scan the QR code. If the QR code doesn't work, there is also this URL, which is uh, uh, backslash ask shy. And these are very simple questions, right? So given time constraints, we're going to do this slightly more accelerated than we usually do. Um, we're going to do this um, fairly quickly in the next 10, 15 minutes. But before you start voting, let me, please don't open the vote yet, please. Just pause that. Um, before you start voting, let me make a couple of requests. Um, number, few requests. Request number one, over the next 10 or 15 minutes, please answer, your que answer these questions as a human being. What do I mean by that? Take off your hats as captains of industry, take off your hats as directors, as CEOs, as CXOs. Answer these questions as human beings. We want to understand what drives human behavior. Right? So don't tell us the answers that we expect to hear, tell us the answers that you actually think. Second request is again over the next 12 minutes, uh, let's just assume that money is only money. And what do I mean by that? When you're answering these questions, do not assume that there is an immediate need for money. Let's just assume that the bills are paid, the kids are taken care of, you've paid your Harvard tuition, you've bought your second Ferrari, you've paid your third alimony, whatever it is that you want to do with your money. What you want to understand is how human beings will react to some of these questions, all other things being equal. Yeah, and I know that is a big assumption, but we're trying to get a little bit into the human psychology and human behavior. Right, could we just please post the question, not the results, just the question, please. Right, so the question one, would you rather, would you rather get a million dollars today? I think you should all have it in your uh, apps. Would you rather get a million dollars today, 1.2 million dollars after 12 months, or one and a half million dollars after 24 months. Is the poll is not on? Sorry, we'll, we'll sort that out. I think it's on again, great. Right? It's a simple question. A million dollars today, 1.2 million dollars after 12 months, one and a half million dollars after 24 months. There is no catch. It's a simple question. It's not that you have to jump through hoops or achieve certain performance conditions, or walk on water, or wear a cape on the outside, none of that. I'm a little old school, I've actually used and worked with checks. Imagine uh, your boss comes to you with three checks, one with today's date with a million dollars, one with 1.2 million dollars 12 months from post dated, one post dated 24 months from now for one and a half million dollars. Yeah? Okay, looks like we've got 
some responses. Can we have a look at the results, please? Huh. Now, isn't that fascinating? Let me ask a follow-up question. For those of us, 60%, who went with a million dollars today, what will you do with it? Thank you. That is usually the most common answer. Invest it. Yeah? Fair. Show me... Uh, please, sorry, can you stay to the poll? If you invest it, show me any relatively risk-free investment option that will give you a 22.5% CAGR over a two-year period. You could take the million dollars today, sure. You could invest it in Bitcoin. Yes, it could go 10 times, but you could lose it all. You could invest it in the stock market. And yes, you could get that 22.5% return, but it comes with risk. If you're unfortunate enough, like me, to live in Singapore, you could invest it in fixed deposits and get 0.0001% interest. The economically rational answer here should have been option C, which is $1.5 million after 24 months. Yet, 60% of us went with option A. And the reason fundamentally is to do with the premise of trust. We don't trust that we will get the one and a half million after 24 months. We don't trust that the organization will still be solvent. We don't trust that somebody who's made the promise to us will come good. And it goes back to a very innate human behavior of human psychology, that human beings, we discount very significantly for anything that has a prolonged time horizon. A big pot of gold at the end of the rainbow starts shrinking the farther away the rainbow is. Yeah? All right, let's look at the question, please, the next question, and please don't share the results yet. I just want to see the question. As, uh, is your question up on your devices? Perfect. So it's a, uh, let me contextualize this question as well. As an executive, which decision would you make? You have two options, which decision would you make? Would you rather, option one is a 50% chance of a $200 million loss, and option B is a guaranteed loss of $80 million. Now let me contextualize this to you for you as well. Um, imagine you've just joined a company as a new CEO. Let's say you have a loss-making business unit. And as a loss-making business unit, you have an option, you can shut down the business unit. Let's just assume the business is losing $80 million. When you shut down that business unit, you've just lost $80 million. That's your guaranteed loss of $80 million. That's option B. Or what you could try to do is you're a new CEO. You could say, you know what? I'm going to try to turn this around. I'm going to invest more money, buy more machinery, buy more property, buy more whatever, technology, hire more people. If it works out, you've come out the hero, i.e., you're not making any profit, you're not making any loss. You've just saved the company $80 million. But if it doesn't work, you've just lost the company $200 million. And let's, for very simplistic sake, say it's a 50% probability. Now, I fully appreciate that a 50% probability is very simplistic. Very rarely in business do you have things that have such clear-cut probabilities. But let's just assume option A is a 50% chance of a $200 million loss, and option B is a guaranteed loss of $80 million. All right, shall we have a look at the results, please? <laughs> now, I wonder how much of this is because it's not really our money. It's somebody else's money. Right? Again, here, the economically rational answer should have been B. B is a guaranteed loss of 80 million. A on a probability adjusted basis, so 50% probability of 200 million, is minus 100. Economically rational answer should have been B, yet most of us went with A. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain this in a minute because it's underpinnings are in a very interesting theory in, econom in economics called prospect theory, but we'll get that, to that in a minute. May I please look at the next question, and are we able to also post the question on the site? Not the results, but just the question? Cannot? Okay. 
we'll make do with what we have. All right, so the next question, please. Hopefully it's come up in your app. Okay. Same probability, same number, slightly different question. So the question is, as an executive, would you rather have a 50% chance of, a two million, of getting a $2 million bonus or a guaranteed bonus of $800,000? Right? Same probability, same numbers, but now it's your money. A 50% chance of a $2 million bonus or a guaranteed bonus of $800,000? Yeah, we have about 100 votes. Could we have a look at the results, please? <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? It almost flipped. In the earlier question, two-thirds of us went with the 50% chance of a $200 million loss. Now, two-thirds of us went with a guaranteed bonus of 800000 Now, again, there is a very specific reason why I'm asking this question. If you think about the economically rational answer, again, the economically rational answer should have been A. A 50% probability of a $2 million bonus, and I know I'm making very broad assumptions and simplifying things, but a 50% probability of a $2 million bonus, its economic value is a million. Over a 10-year period, five years you'll get zero, five years you'll get two million, over a 10-year period you'll get 10 million. Whereas in option B, over a 10-year period you'll only get eight million. So even though option B is the economically irrational answer, most of us will go, or two-thirds of us, will go with option B. And again, the foundation behind this question comes down to trust, or in this case, lack thereof. The old adage, bird in hand is better than two in the bush, well, clearly 0.8 of a bird here is better than 50% of a bird in the bush. Right? And the theory or the science behind this has some very strong principles in prospect theory. Anybody here has come across prospect theory? Show of hands, yep, few hands. So prospect theory is a, uh, I, I'm not an economist, there are people far more clever than me who can explain this, but a very layman interpretation of prospect theory. Um, I know this is not a popular question to ask in Malaysia, but um, if people go to the casino, and I go to the casino once in a while in Singapore, um, it's, it's a very simple game that we go play. We go to the roulette table and we put money on red or black, right? So if those of you who know what I'm talking about, roulette, you put money on red, or you put money on black, or you could put on any different numbers. But let's say in the simplest version, you could put it on red on black. If you put money on red and it comes out red, you double your bet. If you put money on red, it comes out black, you lose your money, right? So play a scenario. Let's say you and I have gone to the casino. Um, I'm putting $10 on red, it comes out black. So I just lost $10. If you are me, what do you do next? Thank you. I double my bet. I now put, that wasn't prompted by the way. I now put $20 on red. Why? With the hope that this time I'll win and I'll recover my past losses. So I put $20 on red, it comes out black again. I just lost 20 more. What do you do? I put 40. I lose again. I put 80. I lose again. I try to get my wallet out to put 160, but my wife comes, she twirls my ear and says, time to go home. Um, and let's play the converse of this, right? The converse, uh, you go into the casino, you put $10 on black, and it comes out black. So you've just got $20 back. Two $10 notes. If you're me, what do you do next? So, okay, in the interest of time, maybe I'll tell you what I'll do next. I take my original $10, I fold it very nicely, and I put it back in my left pocket. The new $10 that I've just won becomes my play money, because I don't mind losing that. Now apply that same concept to executive incentives, to social constructs, to even how we as a society think about achievers and non-achievers, winners and losers. Our social constructs 
particularly our executive compensation models, are built on the premise that people who've taken risk, it discourages them to take bigger and more risky bets. Whereas people who've taken risks and their bets have failed, they are incentivized, or at least the human nature is to try to take bigger and bolder bets, because if one of them comes off, it'll wash away your past sins or your past shortcomings. And as a shareholder, I want the exact opposite. Right? All right, I could talk about this all day, but I know we have a fascinating session after this. So maybe let's go to our next question very quickly. Let's say you bought something online and you paid $100 for it. Yeah? Your package was misplaced, it was not delivered, and the company is refusing a refund. You have to call them on a Sunday afternoon and argue with them for two hours to get your money back. Will you do it? Simple yes or no. Right? So you've paid $100 for something, you've bought a package, package is misplaced, um, you have to call the company and argue with them two hours on a Sunday to get your money back. Will you do it? Yes or no? Could we have a look at the results, please? Good. By the way, so far, every question I've asked you, the results have been consistent every time we do this research. So at Willis Stars Watson, uh, we do this research to try to understand human psychology, human behavior. Um, and we've done this with directors, we've done this with management, we've done this in Singapore, Malaysia, uh, every country that we've done it, every culture, results are similar. Probably the only two exceptions are when I did this in Japan uh, and when I did this in India, but I'll share some, some of those later on. Uh, understood, thank you, this is very helpful. Maybe let's go to the next question. So imagine that a telemarketing company offered you some extra work. You have to argue with people on the phone on a Sunday and they will pay you $100. Will you do it? At same numbers, we're changing the frame of reference here. Right? In the first question, you had to argue to get your money back. In the second question, you still have to argue, but to earn money. Could we have a look at the results, please? Isn't that fascinating? What is the net impact to your bank account in both questions? The same. The economic value in both questions is $100. However, if you come from a position of losing, human beings react far more emotively than if you come from a position of winning. Another human tendency that, again, boards, uh, governance experts need to uh, understand is human beings hate losing a lot more than we like winning. Time is up, I'm getting the signal, so maybe I'll quickly go to my last two questions, and these are very quick. Uh, could we skip the next question, please? Let's, yes, thank you. Would you rather? This is a very simple question, there is no catch. Please don't look confused when you see the question on your screens. Would you rather earn a total package of five million or earn a total package of seven million? It's not a catch, simple question, five or seven. Okay, could we have a look at the results, please? This was a test to, to check whether you're truly economically rational human beings or not, and 95% of us are. Yes, everyone, by the way, again, this is consistent. Every time I've done this, there's at least been five to 10% who says, give me the five million. I was doing the session with Singapore Institute of Directors, and one elderly gentleman, he put up his hand and he said, yeah, I voted for five million, and I asked him why. He said, I just assume lower package would mean lower stress. <laughs> so, for the final question, let's just assume that the stress is equal. Okay? Last question, please. Would you rather get $5 million when the market, the person sitting next to you doing the exact same job gets $3 million, Or would you rather get $7 million when the market, the person sitting next to you doing the exact same job gets $10 million? Same numbers, five or seven. All we've added is we've added a reference point. Would you get five, knowing that the market gets three, 
or would you get seven knowing that the market gets 10? Okay, let's have a look at the results, please. That is fascinating. One third of us switched our answers. Usually when we do this, nearly half people switch. But one third in this case switched their answers. And I'll be honest with you, when I came with this question, I, I, I knew my response, but that night this question kept me awake. And I changed my answer. I originally had gone with the economically rational answer of seven million, but I knew in option B, I'll have, even though I have more money, I knew I'll be miserable spending it. Because what has happened here is my fundamental need as a human being to be treated fairly has been disrupted. It comes down to trust. All the research that we've done around what motivates people, particularly from compensation, comes down to two fundamental things. One, how can I earn more? But two, and more importantly, am I paid fairly for what I do? And as soon as you feel that somebody else is paid more, your sense of self diminishes. So look, thank you for participating in this experiment. This is very interesting. If you could just put the last slide on, I'll just summarize the findings. Uh, what we want to try to say here was, um, do we have that? Perfect. As we think about some of these issues and building a culture of trust, it's important to just note a couple of things. Number one, human beings, we are predictably irrational. We are not rational, or rather we are predictably irrational. Number two, we start discounting very significantly for time. Number three, we discount for any uncertainty. Number four, we hate losing a lot more than we like winning. And finally, we ascribe higher values to relative outcomes than absolute ones. Fairness and equity is fundamentally important, and it all comes down to trust. Thank you for this exercise. It was a little bit fun, um, and see you next time. Thank you.